Hey, I'm Alicia from MobilityMastery.com. And did I get you with the title of this one? <laughs> I hope so. I find this topic super fascinating. I've been kind of nerding out about it for quite a while now. So I'd love to talk to you about it and hear your thoughts. So please comment below as you go through this video if you have any like major ding 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 light bulbs going off. Uh, and of course, we're talking about the potential role of fear in unexplained soft tissue pain. And just to extrapolate on that a little bit, what I mean is when I say soft tissue pain, I'm talking about a lot of the new disorders that are getting classified by Western medicine and labeled. Uh, I hate labels, so if you see me rolling my eyes, it's because our sensory experience is our experience, right? I hate putting labels on it. But what I'm talking about is myofascial pain syndrome, fibromyalgia, connective tissue disorder, scleroderma, um, maybe even MS to an extent, but mostly the other uh, ones that I mentioned first. Uh, so that's what I'm talking about when I say soft tissue pain. And this is just super interesting to me. I This is brand new science to me that I have been learning in 2019 that I'm just super pumped about. I kind of knew some of this already and had shared it with you guys in a few videos here and there over the years, but now I feel like I really have a handle on it as more and more research is getting conducted on fascia, especially in Europe with the European Fascia Congress. So thank you to all the researchers over there doing that work of actually bringing out the science on all of this because I think it's super interesting. Uh, so. One of the things that I read recently in a fascia research document uh, was about how fascia can actually respond to chemical messengers like fear. And I'm not going to get super sciencey on you if you want to go research uh, some of this science yourself. If you're like a super nerd like me, <laughs> um, you can go to, I think it's ResearchGate. Uh, and if you just kind of look up, you know, the European Fascia Congress or Fascia Research in Europe, you should be able to find it. Uh, we'll try to find that and link to it below for you. Uh, but they have, you know, kind of looked at fascia and how it's responding to different chemical messengers. Uh, and so we're going to, in this video, just focus on the topic of fear specifically. So when I'm online in Facebook groups or um, you know, personal development, YouTube channels, and then kind of like looking through the comments, uh, something that just keeps coming up over and over for people, I think everywhere, and I you know I'm certainly one of them, um, is fear, right? Survival, fear of survival, um, fear of uh, disconnection, fear of rejection, fear of not finding your purpose, <laughs> fear of, you know, maybe a repercussions if you speak your truth in your family. I mean, there's so many fears we have, right, that are kind of like really alive in the modern age. And a lot of them, I think, are somewhat new, uh, especially when we consider social media and a lot of the comparison and shoulds that we place on ourselves on ourselves and then the fear that arises as a result of that, right? When we think we need to have a perfect life, we need to look perfect, be perfect, act perfect, speak perfect. <laughs> um, and then the fear that we're not gonna meet up, you know, meet those expectations. Uh, so fear is everywhere, right? And a lot of these soft tissue disorders, I think are somewhat new, somewhat modern. Maybe they existed before, but I have a feeling they were somewhat rare. And there's a lot more we could talk about, you know, and I'm going to do other videos specifically on my thoughts on like fibromyalgia or MS, for example, but today I'm just focusing on this topic of fear. Uh, and so, and then how that can maybe manifest in all the different fascial, uh, you know, disorders, dysfunctions, however you want to talk about it. So what happens when fascia is kind of sensing that chemical messenger of fear repeatedly, or I guess if it's strong enough, is it actually starts to thicken um, and harden. And it does this because it thinks we're in perpetual danger. And I just find that so, that one thing just feels mind blowing to me. Um, and I mean, it, let's just take scleroderma, for example, hardening of the skin. Well, you have su superficial fascia here. And we've had this saying for a long time, right? Like, uh, you better have thick skin, you know, it, it, you know, if you want to have a public career or whatever. Um, we use terms like thick skinned uh, and 
maybe it's literal. <laughs> Doesn't that blow your mind? That the body can actually literally create some of these things we've just been saying and now science is actually catching up and proving it. I just find that so interesting. So your body is actually responding to fear with a physical reaction, a physical process. And then I think it can actually get stuck in a loop because if your nervous system is detecting thickened fascia, it may assume, depending on what's going on in your life and your nervous system, uh, that you're perpetually in danger. And then it creates this endless loop where it's thickening and, and you know, perceiving you're in danger and then thickening and then perceiving you're in danger. Uh, and then your fascial system can't function optimally because all the ways that it needs to function for you are limited due to that thickening of the fascial matrix or fibers, right? So you need fascia that's fluid, that's mostly water. It's not supposed to be fibrous. Uh, and if it's turning fibrous, it probably has more collagen content than water content, and now it's out of balance. Your homeostasis has been thrown off. So that's just one example of how the thickening in response to fear might interrupt the normal processes of that fascial system that can lead to pain, right? Um, but also you have actual pain signals in your fascia, which might then be responding to the, f the fear, right? And the idea that you're in danger, that there's a threat somewhere. But it's interesting because the threat in this, in this case is mostly internal. It's not necessarily external. I mean, maybe you're going to die if you speak up or ask that person out or, you know, face all these fears that we're facing in the modern world, but probably not. Um, and so what was once an evolutionary tactic that served us really well is now kind of turning against us and causing an internal experience where we're internally causing our body to almost, um, it's trying, it's doing its job, right? It's trying to protect us, but it's protecting us against ourselves. Um, and so I encourage you to explore your relationship with fear. And by the way, I'm not demonizing fear. I think fear has a necessary place in our lives, but that's a video for another day. Um, so maybe just think about your relationship to fear, especially if you have any of these soft tissue uh, pain syndromes, myofascial pain syndrome, or connective tissue disorder, anything like that. And please share with me below if this feels resonate, you know, if it resonates with you, if you feel like I'm onto something here because I haven't really seen anybody else talking about this. And I know that myofascial pain syndrome and connective tissue disorder and a lot of these kind of like autoimmune things are seemingly mystifying to Western medicine and they want to give you like a pill. Um, but I think there's an actual reason for it. And this is one of the theories that I'm working with. So you can help me and other people if you share your experience below. If you think I'm onto something, if you think I'm right, if you're resonating with this, share below. And of course, if you don't resonate with this, share that too. I want this to be a discussion, you know? I'm sharing with you guys my working theories and my research kind of in real time. Like as I research it, I want to share it with you guys because otherwise it's just me and me talking at home. Uh, so share below any thoughts you have on this topic. Even if you don't have a soft tissue, you know, disorder or syndrome, uh, it might also explain some of the pain you're feeling. Uh, cause I don't know that we need a label like myofascial pain syndrome to have a physical response to fear that leads to pain. So, Share your takeaways below. Can't wait to read them and talk to you guys about this topic. I just find it super interesting. Uh, and then if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button because I'm putting out new videos to every single week on Monday and Wednesday. And please join my email community if you haven't done so already. I think you're gonna find some resources that will really help you make use of everything I'm doing here at Mobility Mastery so you can live your best life and feel at home in your body. All right, that's it for today, and I'll see you next time.